Hey super scientists, we're looking at 2.1, the properties of water. We're going to be starting out by looking at the structure of water. So this is an image that shows a water molecule. And we know water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. The chemical formula for water is H2O. So when we have that represented here in this model, we can see the large oxygen. And then we can also see the two smaller hydrogens. So really the water molecule looks kind of like Mickey Mouse. So this is the structure for the water molecule. Our first property of water is polarity, and this is a reference to the structure of the water molecule. So in looking at our little Mickey Mouse shape here, again, polarity is going to refer to the poles, the charges that the different parts of the water molecule will have. So the hydrogen atoms are going to be slightly positively charged, and the oxygen atom is going to be slightly negatively charged. So polarity is just a reference to the electrically charged areas, those positive and negative areas because the hydrogen is positive and the oxygen is negative. And this polarity causes water to have all of the unique properties that we're going to be discussing today. Our second property is surface tension. So you may have seen one of these bugs, these water striders, kind of looking like they're floating on the surface of a pond. So these bugs actually do not float on the water. They're sitting on top of the water, and you can see that the depressions here around their legs, they're kind of circular depressions in the surface of the water, and that's due to surface tension. Surface tension is just tightness across the surface of water. So these bugs are not floating on the water, they're actually sitting on top of the water, but because the water molecules at the surface of the water are extra sticky, that because of the polarity, they're really pulling on one another, and that allows for that bug to sit there. And here's a little fun experiment that you can try. You can get a little cup of water and a paper clip and try to float the paper clip on top of the water. It actually can be done. Give it a shot. Our next property of water is universal solvent. So a solvent is going to be something that can dissolve other stuff. And water is the universal solvent. And that means that water can dissolve lots of stuff. So water can dissolve things like sugar tea, Kool-Aid powder. There's all kinds of things that water can dissolve. Our fourth property is specific heat. Water has a high specific heat. So specific heat just means that it's the amount of energy that's required to increase the temperature of a substance by one degree Celsius. So water having a high specific heat means that it's going to resist changing temperatures. It's going to require a lot of energy in order for it to change just one degree in temperature. And as a result of that, water will heat up slowly, it takes a long time for it to change and increase in temperature, but it also will hold that heat and it cools down very slowly. And this is why if you go to the beach or if you go swimming during the summertime, at night, even the water in, in the ocean or the water in a swimming pool is still kind of warm. And that's because water is going to release that heat. It's going to cool down slowly. So it retains that heat because it has a high specific heat. Our next property is cohesion. Your stem co means together. So water has um, this property cohesion. That means that it will stick to other water molecules. Water molecules will stick together. And that's what we see in this picture here. These two water molecules are sticking to one another. Our sixth property of water is adhesion. Add means next to. So water molecules will stick to substances that they are in contact with. We can see that evidenced by dew. So the little drops of water um, are sticking to these blades of grass. So they are in contact with that grass and they're sticking to it. And the seventh property of water, capillary action. So capillaries are little blood vessels that you have in your body. They're the teeny tiny little blood vessels, like the, the ones that are in your eyes. If you look at your eyes really closely in the mirror, you can see these little tiny pink stripes. And those are your capillaries. So cohesion and adhesion working together at the same time in a small tube, that's what capillary action is. So the water molecules sticking together and also sticking to the tube that they're in contact with. So in this example, you can see that there's a straw that's lowered into a little cup of water. And the straw 
the water in the straw appears to climb upward in the straw. And that's because the water molecules are sticking together, but they're also sticking to the sides of the straw that they're in contact with. Water also can change states. So we know that water can exist as a solid liquid and gas here on Earth. And it easily is going to change between these states just depending on the absorption or the release of energy. So if we think about freezing, freezing is going to be going from a liquid to a solid. So the molecules in a liquid will start losing energy. They're going to be giving off energy and they're moving more slowly and they will eventually um, kind of get into a sort of clustered area. They're going to kind of pack together and that is going to be when they are frozen. Melting is going to be from a solid to a liquid and the reverse is gonna be happening. So instead of the molecules slowing down and losing energy, the molecules are gonna gain energy and they're gonna start moving faster. So those molecules start moving faster and faster until they break from those solid bonds and they're able to move freely. So what's gonna happen if the water molecules continue gaining energy? They contain, continue gaining energy, it's going to go from a liquid to a gas and the molecules in a gas are going to have so much energy that they bounce around and they spread apart.